Um, we usually kind of kickstart the um, episode by asking you why you decided to become a pharmacist in the first place. Okay, so I guess at school, my science teachers were amazing. And I feel the way that you're taught really influences the passions that you have in life. Um, so I really enjoyed science and I also really enjoyed business. And for a long period of time, I decided I wanted to be a doctor. My granddad um, trained to be a, lo- a doctor, but long story short, didn't end up taking his exams. Um, so I think part of me was had that drive to finish it for him. But when push came to shove, I realized it wasn't really for me. And pharmacy just seemed like the perfect balance of business and science and interacting with people and helping people. Um, so that's kind of what drove me to do that. Because nice. I kind of mixed my passions all together into one profession. Yeah, true. I mean, there are so many aspects of pharmacy that I personally really, really enjoy. But the fact that you help people on a daily basis, and I feel that every single day makes it worth it. And I didn't know that I would feel this way. And I didn't expect it to be this rewarding. Um, and as a junior pharmacist, I think you've got so much to learn when you're a new pharmacist in terms of skills, you know, your communication skills, problem solving, um, looking at developing your leadership skills, like um, clinical screening of prescriptions. Um, you know, you learn to deal with patients and doctors, nurses, um, that you're kind of in a rat race of just constantly educating yourself and growing as a person so you don't you feel rewarded but now I think with kind of 10 years of experience it's a completely different experience for me um, because those skills that I've developed are now natural to my kind of day-to-day work and every interaction I have with a patient now feels like I've made quite a big difference and especially now in pediatrics it feel and as a parent it feels very different to what I was doing as a band six pharmacist running around a hospital screening hundreds of prescriptions and items a day and you know drug histories and meds rex ttos dispensary slots night shifts it was just never ending so um yeah I think as you kind of develop into the role that reward will improve on a day-to-day basis and it's amazing I love it yeah I mean I'm definitely starting to feel that pressure that you're talking about as a uh, I think we're called trainee pharmacist now aren't we yeah um with because I'm doing my training at Boots um which is really great and everyone in my store is amazing and it's really good experience but we basically have this portal where we have a load of work and it is just like pharmacy operations and there's loads of tasks to complete and it's understanding how to run the pharmacy and it does just feel very overwhelming and there's loads of things that you need to complete and need to know so as you said that interaction with the patients that is feels so rewarding kind of it's not the highlight of everything because there's that much going on and that much that you're learning you're constantly you know on your feet your head's constantly working a super fast pace um but the interactions I've had with patients have just that's been the highlight of my pre-reg experience so far just being able to feel like you're making a difference and when people really show that they've appreciated the time you've spent with them or the explanations you've given them and even there's t- been times when I definitely haven't known what that their answer could possibly be and I've been quite honest with that quite a a lot so I'll say to the patient that I'm just a pre-reg I've been here for you know two and a half months I don't fully know everything yet but give me a few minutes I'll go speak to the pharmacist and I'll do a bit of research and then I'll get back to you with the best answer I possibly can and I think that open and honesty with the patients as well is really important and that's allowed me to build quite a good rapport with quite a lot of the patients because they can relate to the open and honesty. If you're honest, then if you make a slight mistake with something you tell them, they, you know, they're aware that you're still learning. And I think that's, I mean, everyone's still learning on a daily basis, no matter what your age or, you know, where you come from or what you're doing, no matter how much of an expert you are, there's always something to learn. So. 
Yeah, definitely. And I suspect actually now working in a community pharmacy after the kind of worst of the pandemic that patients really appreciate what's offered on the high street because access to GP services have changed quite significantly and having to now face virtual or, you know, internet-based consultations with a GP doesn't feel the same and people still want that face-to-face interaction and to get support whether it's just a bit of advice over the counter or whether it's something more serious where they need to be referred to an A&E or you know to get some help from an urgent care center that the pharmacists end up being the first point of call which is quite exciting um, and highlights the importance of our job. Yeah I found that a lot I found so many people have come in and just being like oh, well, it'll take me weeks to get through to my doctor. So I don't really want to do that. So how can you help me? Like help me in any way you possibly can, because the last thing I want to do is go to the doctor. And it's so nice because I remember when I was starting my pharmacy journey, I suppose you'd call it. So it was first year and my nan didn't really understand what a pharmacist did. And my mom didn't really understand how much knowledge a pharmacist has, like how much we actually have to learn in comparison to someone who's doing medicine. Like it's on par. We know more than doctors about medications the majority of the time, unless maybe they're a specialist and they really, really, you know, have delved deep. Um, But it's just that contact with patients and them finally seeing that, you know, we can do so much more for them than maybe they previously thought we could um and I think you know the pandemic as well has definitely influenced the way that people think about their health so people are you know thinking oh how can I be healthier people are like coming in asking about vitamins to prevent illnesses you know um oh what can I do I've got this little bit of an ailment so they're kind of catching things a little bit earlier than maybe they would have done before um Obviously, there's a massive backlog with um, the NHS with services and stuff, which is devastating. But it's nice that patients feel they can come to us for advice um, as their first port port of call. And in that respect, I really feel that pharmacy will probably change things in that in my head in a few years, well, in maybe five to 10 years time, hospitals will be like a tertiary GPs will be, um, you know, so it'll be hospitals with a last port of call, then it's GPs, and then you'll come to pharmacies for your basic general care. So we'll kind of be doing what GPs were doing, and then GPs will kind of specialise, and it's more when you feel like you need to refer. Um, And I just think that the health of the UK will massively improve through that. Yeah, definitely. And it's amazing to hear that insight in community pharmacy that people are kind of picking up minor ailments or looking at lifestyle medicine and how they can improve their health, even by taking something as simple as multivitamins to support their nutritional needs and to prevent infection and boost their immune system in comparison to what life was like prior to COVID, where we would only kind of pop into the pharmacy if we needed to. 